birthday, birthday Michael Berry Hudson. Hudson. Woo! Yeah. What is pussy popping, you beautiful humans? My name is Ariane Andrew. I'm Matt Dillon, and welcome to another Piping On episode of Sipping the Tea, where we want Ari. Where we sip the tea and our guests spill the tea. <laughs> Girl, you moved homes. You have some awesome background vocal happening right now. I'm like sugar. You left me hanging. You left me hanging. I'm a bitch. I'm a bitch. But it's not about us. It's not. It's not. It's but not I'm fast, so where's your co-host? Uh, my co-host is in bed. We've been traveling quite a bit, so she's, uh, I think she's, she's on the edge of glory in the bed down there. <laughs> where's your little baby? Same. She's like, mom, not today. I like it. I like it. Well, we know 2020 was an absolute bitch. She was not kind. But she did spruce and give us moments of joy, happiness. And Mr. Michael Berry down here, this, this fabulous face. Give us the side pose, Michael. Come on now. Give us. Yes, honey. <laughs> Ooh, he, he was one of my personal favorites in providing humor. And even anyone that's watched Shit's Creek knows who this man is. Because, honey, it went viral. And then he went viral. And then it's just developed into, like, Getting to know Michael. So, welcome to Sipping the Tea, my friends. Thank you, Are you so much. Are you ready to spill some shit? Let's go. <laughs> I, I can't wait. Let's do it. Oh, ready. <laughs> Sadly, ready. I don't have tea. I just have sparkling water. I hope that's okay. Yeah, no, we'll, that's we'll totally fine. We'll okay. <laughs> You're good. Ironically, no tea. <laughs> well, like Matt was saying, 2020 definitely was a very interesting year for all of us. Yeah. And when you take a look back, what is one takeaway that you had personally and with your career? The biggest thing was basically taking a giant, I don't know, are we allowed to swear on here? Absolutely. Uh, pop, fuck That's you. right. I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so wholesome. No, um, taking a giant just like fuck it pill and trying something that I never would. Cause I was like, well, we're all gonna die anyway. So like, <laughs> why not take some risks? Um, and now, like, you know, like before, I, I never would have had the courage to, like, put on a wig and create my own thing. I was one of those actors who was like, I don't know, I'm nervous to write. Like, I can't do that. And, um, and I was like, well, we're all going to die, so why not create something and just, like, have some fun? Having no idea that it would go anywhere. Um, yeah. But now I wish it's like, oh, now I'm how old? And I wish I had done that 10 years ago. I'm, I'm sorry it took matter. a pandemic to teach, to give me the courage to try something new, you know? I appreciate that. I like that perspective, though, that, like, sometimes in the darkest moments, you push yourself to do things that you probably may have never done. But I do feel like you did that shit in the shower, in the, behind the closed door. I do feel like this was, you were performing for your, for your immediate family. Come on now. Doing no, not really. As no. far as like the Shit's Creek impressions, yeah. no. I mean, I've done many other like ridiculous voices and characters for them, but the Moira Rose thing, which is how it started, was yeah. fairly recent. Okay. Um, yeah, I you know with friends we would get dinner, or whatever. We would all pretend to be all the different. You know, we'd be ordering like mm, I don't know. I think I kind of want dressing like on the side, like, <laughs> and I just sort of consistently heard That's that my right. Moira <laughs> was pretty. I love doing a lot. Pretty good. Just she. She's the one I relate to the whole the time. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We can go now. This is so fun. Um, but yeah, I had done it a couple of times. And then right before lockdown, I did Moira in uh, an improv sketch at the pit, okay. just like at a jam. And it was Moira was the manager of a Sephora. And <laughs> afterwards, people came up to me and they were like, that was really good. And even people who had no clue who I was doing. They were like, I don't know what that voice was, but she's hilarious. And uh, so we, when we went into lockdown, my roommate and I did uh, one of those Instagram impression challenges. And he did David, I did Moira. He found an old wig at the bottom of his closet from an old Halloween costume that I popped on my head. And people thought it was funny, like our friends. And that's what I was like, I don't know, let me give this a try. It'll be like every couple of days, Moira will have a cup of tea and give her very specific perspective on life and lockdown. And I thought maybe like 10 friends would watch it. But yeah, no, I, I never really practiced it. It just wow. sort of, happened even still i haven't really practiced i've just sort of kept doing it um, you're just a natural that's it I, and i maybe it's come in handy because I've, I've seen in interviews where she's like there's no rhyme or reason to it there's no pattern so people who like do try and like figure it out it's like no yeah. it's not like a rubik's cube you'll never gonna you know, <laughs> that's why i just sort of wing it and hope for the best well it's it's been very good it's been very good to you and as a 
as a plateau to uh, kind of springboard off. Mm -hmm. But I want to kind of get to know Michael and where you you started and where you know your before the pandemic, who was Michael? Where did you start? Where did you find the passion for entertainment? Because you know, to to come to where you are, there has to be the backstory. So come on, oh, rip it out of yourself. I, I want all I, the I, filthiest I, moments. Let's go. <laughs> when I was but a twinkle in my father's eye in Potsdam, New York, <laughs> he locked eyes with my mom, who was voted best legs on campus. <laughs> and yeah, which she still talks about and is still super proud of. She has a oh, PhD she's in clinical psychology, but she's like, but I had amazing legs. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we all have our things. Um, the one time I wore heels out, she was, she's that picture. She's like, Michael, you get your legs from me. Um, but yeah, no, I started performing when I was six. Um, I think so I was really hyperactive, I was super ADD and needed an outlet for my energy. And my parents took me to see a production of Beauty and the Beast in Toronto yeah. when I was about six years old. And I came out and I was like, I just wanna be the candlestick. Like one day I'm gonna be that candlestick. I love that. And um, I grew up in Syracuse, New York, which has no sunlight and it's winter 10, 10 months out of the year, but there's a lot of theater. I've been there. Yeah, so yeah. you know, it's it's very dark and it's very cold. Um, but actually, no, it's a great place to grow up, luckily. But yeah, there's loads of theater. And so my parents started me auditioning for shows when I was like six, seven years old. Wow. And I just loved it. Um, the first show I did was The King and I, and I had this one little bit that got a laugh every time. And little, you know, six-year-old me was like, that's the best feeling in the whole wide world. Yeah. So then I started watching, you know, old movies like Mel Brooks movies, Monty Python movies, anything Robin Williams, like those really goofy people and memorizing their bits. And I would like perform them at dinner. Um, yeah, and that's sort of where it all started. And I, you know, I played sports, I did loads of other things, but theater was sort of the consistent thing throughout my life. So went to school for it. Um, and then actually dabbled in casting a little bit out in LA. So I've worked for some casting directors. So I've spent the last oh, what, 12 he, he, years he, he, sort of bouncing on either part. side of the table. Okay. Yeah. That's what you have to do though. I feel like being in entertainment though, you, you know, you have to be a jack of all trades or like I say, I call myself a queen of all trades and that's mm -hmm. what you do. You, you have your hands into so many different things. And I feel like that's what the industry calls for. Now, mm -hmm. I do have to ask, Yes. you have, you know, clearly made so much success and mm -hmm. you know when you look at people's instagram and you look at all the the after you're like wow this this person just hasn't made but my question to you is what do you do when you feel like you've hit like a brick road and then things have gotten difficult because we all know entertainment's hard you get a lot of no's oh, yeah. and you hit a lot of like roadblocks and you're like what the fuck so how do you like overcome those moments Oh gosh, yeah. Oh, because I've had many a moment where I'm like, this is rock bottom, I've hit it. And then something happens, you're like, nope, <laughs> I, was, I was two floors above. <laughs> like even yes. before lockdown, I right before lockdown, I was like, is this for me? That's where it's funny how this happens. That's when I was really debating. I was like, do I wanna do this anymore? Cause mm -hmm. most of the jobs I was getting when I was lucky enough to work were out of town. I live in New York, but I was in Florida for four months doing a show and North Carolina for three months doing a show. and you you move a lot and there's so much instability mm -hmm. um but even then i was like do i want to do something more pragmatic i don't know um and then this all happened and i was like just kidding but but yeah those moments um i i, I feel like it's that's when i would actually go to friends of mine who are in the business and be like i can't do this anymore like friends i have one friend who i went to grad school with and she's sort of my go-to cry buddy where i'm like i can't do this i want to be an adult and be able to make car payments and <laughs> you know and we just sort of talk it through that's where like having that support system of other people in the industry who sort of know what you're going through um who can tell you like no michael medical school is probably not the best option for you. You're not great with blood and it will be 15 years and you hate science. And I'm like, fair. Um, so that's sort of the big thing is relying on other people and not going through those times alone. So I think a lot of us hit those really tough moments and you never want to admit it. It almost feels that's embarrassing to say yeah. that you've hit a low point, especially in entertainment. You know, it's so all consuming in your life. It's a job, but it's almost a lifestyle. And it's admitting to some level of almost feeling like a failure, which none of us like. And it's hard to admit those moments where you're like, oh, I just don't have the urge to get up and go to another audition. I don't think I can do it. And that's where, yeah, I think you have to have that, those friends that you can go to and be like, I can't yeah. help me. 
Thank you baked, for sharing Find me that, baked though. goods. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think there's a huge part of being vulnerable. And especially when you've created such a big fan base and people who do follow you and want to be like, well, I want to be just like Michael. Oh, I know he probably never has any down moments. I think that that's so important to share. So thank you for like sharing that moment because some people don't like to keep it 1000. They're like, oh, I don't ever really get a low moment. I'm like, we're a human. I don't care what field you're in, but we chose the most craziest field. Yeah. There are definitely going to be moments where you're like, what the fuck? Oh my God, so many of those moments. And I mean, they're much nicer though when you sing them. <laughs> the way <they're> just, <laughs> you're just walking down the street and someone sees you like, what the actual fuck? And they're like, I'm oh, like, he's like, like, like that bottom, but I'm, I'm like, that's the singing part's true. I always yeah. think there's a theme song in my head and you're strutting down the street feeling, you know, up the, up I, the Yeah, I think we're coming up with a great concept of depression, the musical. Like, <laughs> this is gonna be a big hit. I need to call my therapist, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. crazy. So let's talk about the viral moment. I, clearly you were a fan of Shit's Creek, yes? Yes, oh, could you imagine if I was like- I would know, I was trying to catch you out and be like, the two years he fucking hates it. And <laughs> now, he's, now the, uh, the so you were a fan. Yes. And I feel like the, now hearing you say, that it was more like a spur thing. It wasn't rehearsed. It's coming through your, like it's your interpretation. You're not overthinking things. What was it like? Like the, the whole kind of rollout and this progression and then having the person that you're actually imitating that character, having the, like the whole, cause that's fucking iconic. So give me, give it, give it, give it. What is that like? Yeah, it, it was insane. Cause I, I'm such a little old man. Um, I know nothing about social media. I grew up watching like old black and white movies and my friends used to sort of joke that I was their token 85 year old friend who like, I knew way more about like Debbie Reynolds than, than Demi Lovato. I own a lot of old man cardigans. Um, so of everybody I knew, they said this, they were like, you, you're the one who's on, so it was doing well on social media. Um, it, it was, it's been a real learning curve. Cause okay. like I said, I was just sort of bored one day in lockdown and I was like, well, this is a funny idea. And I bounced it off a friend of mine. She's like, that sounds like fun. And now like I, it, it, so really it, it came as, it happened quickly. My second video got a few thousand views and I was like, oh, whoa, okay. So there, now there's a little bit more pressure to create something worthwhile. Yeah. Um, and actually my mom called me and she was like, if you're gonna do this, Michael, try and keep everything positive. Have every video be some sort of positive message because it's what we need right now. Mm. And then another friend who does drag called me and he was like, if you're gonna do this, brush your hair. Um, because my, my wig was a mess. Um, and so that became sort of the challenge. I was like, how can each video be about something different and that we're struggling with, but have an uplifting message, but still within that sort of like shady tone of Moira Rose yeah. um, with her vocabulary. But yeah, with the social media, it actually was a bit of a struggle, like learning, I learned how to edit and how to edit videos, make them succinct, and then how to hashtag. A friend got me on FaceTime and had to walk me through how to use Twitter. Um, so it. I could respond to a Chase and Buttigieg tweet, which then he replied with and DM'd me. And he was like, this is hilarious. And I was like, I can't believe this. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's been, it's been exciting, but at the same time, nothing feels like it's changed. You know, I, it's a year and a half later and I'm still sitting in my kitchen. I just now have more wigs than I did before and I get more views and more comments, but my life doesn't actually feel really any different. I'm still just sort of having fun. Um, and figuring it out as I go, you know. I, I thoroughly appreciate that that encapsulation of that moment because that yeah. I think this this is your moment. Like that's this has been a huge successful like explosion. But I feel like this is the you're like here now to ready to go up to. And as the world is opening, like that's that's very well said. Very well said. It must be that 85 year old man in you. Where's your car? Sure, yes. <laughs> He's like the one who doesn't understand this well enough to have an ego about it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love that. <laughs> I, but... I love how you touched on and being again, so like vulnerable and open and saying like, I had to do a FaceTime with my friend to figure out hashtags and I didn't how to figure okay. it out. And so for people out there listening who want to get an entertainment business, who want to, you know, have an amazing TikTok, create an amazing brand, whatever that may be, what would be your advice to people who feel stuck because they feel intimidated and for people who are trying to expand? 
Um, I would say definitely don't feel intimidated because I did for about 12 years. And now I really, like I said, I wish I had the like balls to create something new, you know, or the courage. Sorry, that's such a crude way to phrase that. But <laughs> big balls, little balls, I, courage. I don't even know. Shit. We've been in lockdown for a year. I just had a moment. I was like, is that even PC to say? I wish yes. I'd had the courage. Oh, no, you're not going to get canceled, babe. You're fine. You're fine. Oh. Yeah, we're not, we're not canceling culture here. Okay. Actually, you know what? I feel like we should flip that. My sister was just saying, she was like, you know what? A vagina is a much stronger thing than anything a guy has. So I feel like pussy, we should be get like, it, I have oh. a pussy to create that. Because vaginas are tough and strong. So I had the pussy to create something new. Um, so I would say, don't be afraid because the joy of social media is that there's so much out there that the worst thing that happens is you create something that doesn't really go well. Okay, you can delete it and try something new or it only gets 10 views and you read the comments and figure out why you can evolve. It's this wonderful platform where you can really express what you want. And I think that's, that's what I've learned over the course of this experience and meeting other TikTokers, Instagrammers is the people I've, found to be successful or to at least enjoy it the most are the ones who create the most honest content to who they are and what they're feeling. You know, even though I'm doing a parody of these characters that I didn't create, for the most part, the words I write are all mine. And a lot of the posts, the videos that I did were all very true to how I was feeling in that moment. You know, if I had days where I was feeling overwhelmed and scared in lockdown, Moira went into her closet and her antidepressants hadn't kicked in yet. And she was having a bad day. And so it's like, how, how can I phrase what I'm genuinely feeling in this moment through her voice? Um, and I think that's sort of the key. And I think people can, they can tell when you're being genuine and when you're being honest. And I feel like people really respond to that. I know I do. So, so those at least are the people I like to follow are the ones who really have sort of found their voice and really follow it and don't shy away from it or try and shoehorn themselves into a trend or something, you know? It's, it's a tricky, like, this sphere of like that because it's like people, it's just that, that authenticity is so important. And then sometimes you're like, holy oh, shit, that person's actually not being, like, there's those that yeah. play that. And then there's those that like speaking to you, I'm like, this is just the edge of what you're about to go on because the world's opening up because you are, couldn't be any more like open and real and like, you know, just being like, hey, it was something I did. And I think that's the, the snippets and the Moira stuff work because you did share them as what's going on inside here and here. Mm -hmm. And play it through a character that was globally everybody loved. So it's kind of like mm -hmm. you being able to do that it is great, but that, that lies the question though, as the world is opening up and we're, we're looking to the future, what does Michael want? Is like, you can't be, you know, you're 85 year old man now, you'd be dead in 10 years. So, oh my what? God. Hey, listen, I just plan on being the next Maggie Smith. I'm gonna be 65 forever. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'm a 90 year old man. I like to freaking be on the couch watching my shit too. So I'm about, I'm not, I'm not, great. I'm not about um, that, but I would love to see yeah. what, what you want, what you want the next six months, the next year to look like for you as, as an entertainer first mm -hmm. and as a human being. Yeah. Um, I think next thing, like as an entertainer, I, I've really enjoyed writing and I've really enjoyed sort of being my own boss. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really fun. It's uh, and, yeah. And um, yes. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Um, <laughs> plink. <laughs> Um, so, so like I'm, I'm working on a script with a friend who is an actor who lives in London and he wanted to create something. So we're working on a, a pilot that we've actually had some meetings. And so that might go somewhere. We'll see, you know, knock on wood. Um, but I'm really loving the process of writing my own script and getting more into that. So I think that's sort of what the, hopefully the next six months is going to hold is doing a lot more of that now that I've sort of had this newfound, um, voice and this newfound sort of, um, I don't know, drive to create my own thing. Um, so that's hopefully where I'm headed is doing more things like this. And, you know, I'm talking to somebody about creating this little like two person cabaret that we're going to try and perform in New York. So it's, it's doing a lot of like, I'm just sort of throwing as much spaghetti at the wall and seeing sort of what sticks. But as far as like things that I'm actually creating, which is really fun and exciting. Um, cool. And then hopefully looking at more TV film work, because before this, I pretty much focused on theater. I did a lot of musical theater and a lot of, a lot of different kinds of theater. And now I have these like TV and film casting directors who know who I am and who are actually calling me in. And you know, I'm, in the door now, you can get in. So. Yeah, and like casting me on shows. And, and I just shot my first, you know, part on a network TV show and had a blast. It was so much fun being on set and, you know, being on a set that big. 
and and you get multiple tries, which is great. The audience will do with you. You just like get to try again if you mess up your line. Um, and I just shot my first feature film right before lockdown, which actually comes out on the 21st. It comes out soon. It's this movie called Milk Water, which was really fun. Um, so hopefully more TV film work as well. Um, nice and then film. personally, yeah. personally, who knows, you know, I will see, we'll see where I end up. <laughs> <laughs> you know. the takes you. I feel like that's kind of yeah. like, we're all adapting each and every day. I feel like there's something new happening. We're like, okay, well, we're just going to adapt and see what the hell happens. Yeah. And, and I definitely feel more confident these days than I did. I think a big, a big, a lot of those low points, you know, that you talk about, I think a lot of them for me came out of a lack of confidence. You know, I think when I was feeling bad about myself, you know, that's when you blow auditions. That's when you miss networking opportunities because you don't believe in yourself in those moments. How can, you know, a casting director believe in you if you come in already with the energy of I can't. Yeah. Um, and I definitely over the last year have this sort of newfound confidence that, person that's bleeding into you know personal moments in life too where you know I go on a date and I'm like wow I'm super weird and I do odd voices but I'm not gonna apologize for it I'm just gonna Love be the that. own my oddballness you know he's earning his pussy power baby so let's get my that. yes pussy I power, love that let's pussy pop okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, even with a dance. I like that. Of course, honey, we're dancing. No. <laughs> and I, I love, because I love when I, we meet people and interview them who are just so truly authentically themselves. So I mean, Matt and I are the same, even with starting this sip in the tea. And I was like, well, I want to say what's pussy popping. And people are like, oh, well, I don't really know. That's a little, I'm like, it's my way of saying hi. Like, I want to stay true to who who I am. Like, it's not mm -hmm. for everybody, but I feel confident when I say, what's pussy popping? So I, I love it. <laughs> I think it's really catchy. I'm a sucker for alliteration. And I, I, you know, as I said, talking with my sister, I think we vaginas should be celebrated at all times. So. Uh, well, I'm not going to be mad at that. Okay. Well, before we decide to close the show, we're going to do a few rapid fires. Okay. So it's the first thing that comes to your mind. Please don't tell us a storybook now. Just the quickest thing <laughs> you can, you can yeah. see there. Okay. Um, so who do you call on a bad day? Who do I call on a bad day? Because uh, it's being succinct is so hard. Um, uh, we're going to say my friend Eunice. She tends to talk me off of cliffs really well. Okay. Either her or my friend Alyssa. It would be one of the two. Whoever picks up first. <laughs> and when they, don't, when they don't pick up, you're like, fuck me. I'm on yeah. the <laughs> Oh, over. The, yeah. If you were granted one wish... What would it be? Um, that I could speak every language on the planet, even if I was just immediately fluent in every language and could communicate with literally anyone. Top love choice, that. love that. Name one thing you could work on about yourself. Um, Self-discipline in, in every aspect. I can be a real slacker okay. when I really want to be. Yeah, like I really should exercise more and I just don't. Wow, yeah, I'm in that boat, but this one's the, the exercise queen. I see those abs, girl, I see that. Uh, I had to get back on it, you know, it was like after the move and stuff. But anyway. Good for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and then go ahead, Matt, you want to end with the last one? Last question? one, I want to know, obviously, if you had to pick between, see, I don't know you personally, so I don't know, like, Shit Creek as opposed to, like, Friends, which show would you pick, which is more iconic to you? Oh, Shit's Creek. I didn't really watch Friends, though. I mean, I liked the episodes I saw, but I would never got super, super into it the way I think he's a, lot a of young motherfucker did. because, honey, that's, uh, Friends is iconic. I'm an old bitch over here, honey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I grew up with like The Nanny and Will and Grace were like my oh, cornerstone right. sitcoms growing up. Okay. Like, I just wanted to be Yetta, if that explains anything about me. Like, I related to her more than anyone else when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's that, with no, Fanny honey, Pack. Let's... <laughs> that, that's a everything. Yeah. So I like that. Yes. Well, Michael, we appreciate you coming on and spilling a little tea. But before we completely close out, let everybody know where they can follow you at. And yeah, go ahead and spill the tea. Well, well thank you. Um, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at mjudsonberry. 
uh, on Twitter at mjudson one Barry because I have M. Judson Barry and it's an old account and I can't figure out how to get rid of it. Um, and uh, on the YouTubes at uh, Michael Judson Barry or Quarantine Time, you can find me in both places. Love that. Love it. Yes. Love that. Where can everybody follow you at, Mr. Matt Dillon? You can follow me at Matt Dillon 1983 and uh, gold, gold finger over there, Miss Ari. <laughs> Where can we follow you at, Sparkles? You guys can follow me across the board at Ariane Andrew. And of course, follow some of the TTV show on Instagram, some of the TTV one on Twitter. Of the course, one. like, subscribe, comment, share with all your friends. And if you're more of an auditory person, then you can stream it on all digital platforms. But we will catch you guys same time, same place of another episode of Sipping the Tea TV shows. Bing! Bam. <laughs>